Gabe, you gonna vote in California or Washington? I voted in California. I already sent my thing in, so. You've been uh, encouraging your teammates to, to rock the vote this November? To vote? Uh, not gonna lie, no. Uh, I just did my part, you know, so. Everyone's got a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of hard to, you know, people aren't going to sleep, so. Well, you finally got a, a day game. It must have been nice to, to really have something to celebrate, too, when you finally get some time afterwards, too. Yeah, I mean, see, we play pretty well in the daytime, obviously, so, you know. We're probably not going to get too many more of those if we keep winning, so, you know, just had to enjoy it. You mentioned keep winning. How nice is it to control your own destiny at this point? You guys, you know, keep winning. It's better than having no destiny. So a destiny is better than no destiny. So it's always good to be able to play games that matter at this point in the year. You're pretty close to Nelson Spruce's record. Uh, that's a guy you know from your LA days, correct? Yeah. Do you talk to him about it? Have you said anything to him? No, I don't. I mean, we don't. We don't talk like that. But you know, I'll probably, I'll probably hear from him soon. I don't know. He's in the NFL. He's, you know, doing his thing. So, you know. I think we ask you a lot about records, but what would that specific one mean? You're pretty close. Oh, that that one would be tight. You know, that would probably that one would be really cool. Uh, cause it's like. It's a it's a Pac-12 record, you know. So it'd be it'd just be it'd be good to have my name at the top of that record, you know what I mean? Because catching passes is kind of like it's kind of like my job. So to be recognized as the guy that caught the most would be like that'd be tight, you know. Between catches and touchdowns, a single season in career. I mean, you have quite a few at this point. Is there one that's the most special? Uh, I love all my children equally. You know, I try not to put too much uh, stock on one over the other. Um, when I when I when I got the receptions receptions records for the school, that was kind of that one kind of was a big one for me because that's one that I. Didn't, I kind of thought a while ago that I'd be able to get to if I just kept playing well. So that that was one that I was really working for. The, these other ones I didn't really <clears throat> like the touchdown catches and stuff. I didn't really think about getting those because you know you had to have some pretty pretty good seasons to get to that. And then after I, after last year, 15, I was like, all right, maybe I'll be able to get to it. And then, you know, so, you know, yeah. Who were your favorite Pac-12 wide receivers to watch growing up? Pac-12 wide receivers? Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, Mike Williams from USC, big guy. He's just uh, just super physical and stuff like that. And <clears throat> Steve Smith was good. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I was... I like watching like the Big Twelve and stuff more, kind of. I mean, other than like USC, obviously when they had Reggie Bush and all them, that was pretty cool. You know, everyone liked USC. I think Dwayne Jarrett's still up there on one of those lists. Was he a guy you paid much attention to? Uh, yeah. I mean, when as I was uh figuring out more about playing wide receiver, I I, I realized that he. Was he was a lot more polished playing art, running his routes and stuff than most guys, and just subtle things that he did was pretty cool. I mean, it obviously showed because he's got a bunch of records at USC. So to do that is pretty. I mean, you got to be pretty good, you know. You got to see any of uh, Chad Hansen this year? Yeah, yeah, hell of a guy. He's good. <clears throat> I didn't I didn't know much about him before this year. He kind of just kind of came on the scene, you know, which is cool. And he was he was a walk on, right? Yeah, transfer. That's always cool. Where did you transfer from? Iowa State. 
Iowa State. Idaho State. Idaho State. Oh wow. Look at him. Yeah, that's cool, man. I'm all I'm a big uh big walk on success guy. You know what I mean? I live with the dog, so you know. Always been a big fan of those guys that <clears throat> they, they got you got like a chip on your shoulder from being a walk on and stuff like that. So you can you can definitely see that in his game. And he's He's actually really talented, and he's, he goes up and gets the ball well for a big guy. And uh, he's got some some post-catch ability to make some plays. So, you know, definitely got respect for his game, for sure. Do you think that walk-on chip on the shoulder thing is part of what has made Luke so successful here? Yeah, sometimes I even forget that he was a walk-on ever, you know what I mean? Because it's just like... <clears throat> Just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, he's just good. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I can't personally tell you what the walk on chip on your shoulder feels like, but uh, I'm sure it has something to do with it. He wasn't recruited the way that he probably thought he should be coming out of high school. I don't, I don't know. Dave, you've been here for five years. <clears throat> when you first got here and Luke was here, did you ever think that guy is going to be my quarterback one day? No. No. I did it. He's come a long way for sure. I, I only ask because that's what River told me last night. He's like, I no never thought Luke was ever going to be a yeah. quarterback. <laughs> he was like, he was just like, he was like always just the, the other guy that was there, you know, all the time. Connor, Connor was there. And then. We had Tyler Brogman at the time, who was supposed to be like the second coming of, you know, Moses or whatever. And, uh, you know, obviously I was wrong. You know, second coming of Moses was standing in the background, not getting any reps in seven on in the summer with the really, really weird long, long hair kind of weird thing that he was doing when he first got here. Just like, Who's this guy? You know? And then that that spring that spring game, where, the spring game where him and Brogman kind of went at it, and he kind of beat he beat him out. That spring game that was kind of that was kind of where I was like, oh god, this this guy's kind of the gamer, I guess. You know, I was watching that game in the hospital actually. That's when I was going through my little thing. So I was like yelling on some Remember the Titans stuff. You know what I mean? Throw the ball, you know. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he 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 outplayed him that day, and I was like, all right, this guy, this guy looks like he throws a pretty nice ball, really catchable ball. So I think we can make this work. And he's gotten better. Obviously, he's gotten stronger. He's grown into his body more. I don't know. Yeah. Would you see or would you like out of uh, Olinsky see him again this week? Good old Clink, huh? <laughs> Clinker. He's out there. He, he, he plays the game with the. He plays the game free. You know what I mean? I, I always knew. I mean, we all know that he can throw the ball. You know what I mean? He just needed to get. He hadn't gotten any real action, so it was good to see him. Get some. Some solid minutes out there and play against a, a Pac-12 team and see what he could do. It. <clears throat> It shows, it makes you uh, comfortable with the future post Luke era that, you know, it'll be in good hands, I guess, when he takes over the reins. I was trying to give him my words of, of wisdom before he went out there, but I, I guess he didn't really need it. He was fine. What kind of wisdom, what, what are some things that you say to a guy like that? I just tell him what I, what I always tell Luke, like, before we start. It's just like, you know, you know, go out there, you know, run the show. We'll, we'll, they'll follow you. We'll follow you, you know what I mean? Like, it's your show today. And just uh, take what they give you. That's a big thing I always try, always try to tell Luke is just take what they give you. Because sometimes, you know, him and Leach get to going in, the, in a game and they get to start, you know, brainstorming crazy stuff on the sidelines, like drawing plays up in the sand. It gets, if you let Leach go, you let him go, he'll, 
he'll start making plays up in the game and stuff like that. So you got to know he does a good job of uh, kind of taking taking it, taking what he's giving them, but also like, all right, you know, I'm probably not going to run this one, but I'll I'll t I'll take that, you know, and just taking what they give them. Which is always the best thing to do in our offense because, you know, once you start forcing things and things start to get weird, you know. You guys have attributed a lot of the success in the past to the team getting a lot closer and players starting to spend a lot more time together and starting to buy in more. Can you think Friday's meeting can kind of add that sort of effect or did that kind of tell Friday. The Board of Regents thing. Having all the players in the room like that, was that sort of a moment for this team? Uh, was that a, was it a moment for the team? Do you think it brought people together? I mean, we were already. It's not like we decided oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be friends now. You know what I mean? We're in. It's not like we were up there like putting on a show or anything. I mean, you guys kind of, I guess, got to see a little bit of how how serious we are about what we say in here about the team and stuff and you know but it wasn't anything like a revelation to anybody maybe a revelation that I was in there going so hard but other than that you know we expect to do we expect that from each other Have you ever done anything like that before I do what I can you know I don't know how how many people get opportunities to to do something like that. You know, those I feel like those are a couple kind of opportunities you get a couple times. So I just tried to use the the platform to get a couple points across and you know things like that. Can you kind of describe what it was like doing that? <clears throat> I don't know. I mean. I guess you could say that, that you say the room was a little tense, I guess, but I was I was unbothered by it, you know. Talk to you guys all the time. Got to make sure I word myself right when I talk to you guys, or you know, things might end up on you know front page somewhere, me saying something crazy. So I kind of know how to filter what I want to say the right way now. But things got a little tense, you know. But, you know, it's a tense situation, so. Did the Regents seem receptive to you, like they were listening? Uh, oh, were you there? Yeah. What do you think? It was back and forth. I mean, you guys. And I was there with you. I don't know. Yeah. What are you, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm, I made, I'm, I said what I said. They, everyone said what they said, and, you know. It's still their decision. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I hope they make the right decision, but you know, I can't. We can't control that. So you just try to focus on the next game and just, you know, try to win some more games. You know. Any questions on the line for Gabe Marks? Hey, Gabe, it's Seth. Oh. How are you guys kind of kept level-headed with all the with the win streak? You know, you're at a point where. None of you have been in this place before you have so many unbroken wins. Like, how do you guys kind of keep that focus and make sure you don't get complacent about it down the stretch? Uh, I mean, I don't feel complacent about it, you know. I almost feel like uh, anxiety about it in between the week. Like, like, let's just go play now, you know what I mean? Like, let's go get another one, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know. Uh, Getting complacent, like if you were to get complacent about it, I feel like that that would be like a team that that didn't think that they could win as many games in a row would probably like start to be complacent. Like, oh wow, I didn't even expect to to do all this. So you know, this is this seems good enough. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna ride this way right here. But you know, even when we were when we were 0 and 2, we knew that we were better than that. So I don't. Uh, I didn't really feel any any surprise. So you don't feel that you guys ever lost that, I guess, that self belief this year, even when things looked kind of rough in the beginning and you were 0 2? 
And we didn't lose any self-belief in ourselves. We lost self-belief in you guys because you guys lost self-belief in us. But, you know, it's not really anything to be – we all know we're not really friends. Everyone's trying to do their job, I guess. But we all, we all knew that we were going to be good. It's just a lot of people jumped off the wagon pretty quick, which is okay, you know, 0-2. You know, fans will be fans, but that's why they don't play it. So right. with Calvin, and it's the last few years you guys have lost to Calvin, it's been very close both times. Does this Cal game kind of loom as one that maybe you're into, you're 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 more eager to play than some of the other Pac-12 opponents that you've faced and beaten in the last couple of years? Uh, no. Uh, I, whenever, whenever us and Cal get together, it's always gonna be a, it's always gonna be a hell of a deal, you know. It's always gonna be, there's gonna be points scored, you know. Almost inevitable. The, the the offenses are just, you know, it's a heavyweight showdown. So it's always fun to be able to get out there and play those guys. But it's not like a, like a, like a. Like we 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 mark Cal on our schedule like oh wow can't wait to play Cal be, that's the one you know it's just like you know I was kind of more anxious okay. I was kind of more anxious about the Oregon State game because I know that I knew that Oregon State was like people were gonna be talking to us all week like oh how much are you gonna beat Oregon State by and stuff like that and they don't they don't really know that Oregon State's not what their uh, what their record is you know what I mean. They're actually really good, mm -hmm. and I already knew that. But everyone's like just talking crazy about it, and so that was that's I I was kind of nervous about whether or not the the guys were gonna listen to that or not. We kind of came out flat a little bit, but it worked out. We figured it out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anything else on the line for Gabe? Who else is on the line? I'm just say, say something. She's the only one that has the heart to say anything every week. I, I only think it's her only one. At least say hi. Hi, Gabe. This is Nick Geranius of Associated Press. There we go, Nick. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good, thanks. It's like the, you, uh, it's like the FBI. He just, your, your, he just uh, listens in. Your decision making to come to Washington State, uh, was it your number one school, or did you have others that you were considering pretty closely? Uh... Well, I was committed to SMU first, and uh, I mean there was other schools like like Utah offered me and stuff like that. And, like oddly enough, like Kentucky and like Vanderbilt offered me, and uh, Colorado. It was kind of a weird recruiting process, probably because I committed to SMU so quickly. They were just like, oh, this guy's weird. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to play big time ball, I guess. But I was just, uh, I wasn't really worried about that. I was just trying to get into a system that worked for me. I care about the, the schools and what they've done in the past and all that weird stuff. So uh, when Washington State came, I just figured, oh, this is like the same thing as SMU, but it's in the Pac-12. And, uh, you know, Mike Leach is cool. I mean, June Jones is cool too, don't get me wrong. I really like June. I wonder what he's doing right now, but Mike Leach is really cool, and I always watched Texas Tech, and I like Michael Crabtree, and Graham Harrell, and stuff like that. So I just figured this is probably like a level up from the decision I already made. So I just jumped on. I committed before I even uh, took the visit. I didn't really care what it was like up here. I just knew that I was gonna be able to put in a position and catch a lot of passes, and I ended up liking the play. So. It worked out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anything else on the line for Gabe? All right, I'm back in the room. Yeah, it seems like you, you guys did learn a lesson from Oregon State or something. Um, there, there wasn't a letdown at all, except for maybe a two-play stretch Saturday. Mm -hmm. Any theories as to what was 
behind that? I don't know. I think we just woke up and played good, played a good game. I don't know. Uh, everything that we did kind of, kind of just kind of worked on Saturday. So we got put into some some tough spots. I mean, we had to convert. We were like 11 of 14 on third down. So I mean, if we didn't convert those third downs, you know, then what would the game have been? Probably wouldn't have been the way it turned out to be. So we still had to. We still got put in some spots where we had to make things happen, you know what I mean? So it's just good to see us play all the way through and, you know, not like ease up or anything. And it was just, it was a nice day. I mean, there was a bunch of dads out there just going hard, you know, just like enjoying the college atmosphere again, coming back to school, you know, their kids are like taking care of them and stuff like that because they're out of control. And uh, it was just fun, dude. It was a good environment, you know. Grown, grown, grown men acting like children. You know, it's a nice day. You know, everyone's feeling good. It's kind of warm for a November game. You know, so we just got after it. We wanted to be a part of the fun too, so we tried to get her done. We've always heard that, that Dad's Day crowds are a little bit quieter than than, uh, than usual. Was that not the case on the field? The, the the crowds are quieter. You the, think? The dads do because I don't know, man. I mean, we're 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 a good team, and so there's a good product to come be excited for. So I think that kind of got them amped. You know, these dads are, are real fans. I always say dads, dads weekends when you get the most fanning. You know, what I mean, these guys like they love it. You know, so now that we're playing good football, they just. Use this as an opportunity to just come on back in the time machine and just get after it on a Saturday. So, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many dads made it through the game. You know what I mean? I hope they were okay. You know, but they were going hard for sure. Uh, what is your relationship like with Coach Leach? I mean, you have two unique personalities. Are the conversation, I mean, just what is it like when you guys get together? Uh, it could be, it could be, it varies. There could be fireworks, you know. There could be, you know, just casual conversation. We talk about a lot of things. I like to ask him questions about things that I, you know, just important things to just see what he's thinking. He's usually always thinking the, the opposite of what the majority of people think. Like with the whole Cubs thing, you know what I mean? That was really disappointing. That was disappointing. I didn't say anything to him, to him about it, but that was disappointing. But then I, I talked to my grandfather, and he wanted the Indians to win too, which was like, at that point, I didn't know, I didn't know what it, what was going on. You know, it's like, why don't you want the Cubs to win? Haven't they had enough? You know, it's beautiful. They've been partying for what was that last week? They've been partying for like seven days. I'm surprised that, you know what I mean? Chicago, I mean, the crime the crime probably went down, you know, everyone's, <laughs> there's peace everywhere, you know what I mean, everyone loves everybody, they're singing songs, you know, they got a band out there, the players think they're the Rolling Stones now, you know what I mean, it's, it's beautiful, I don't, I don't know why you would want anything other than that, Cleveland already got a championship, they just won, you know, what does Chicago got, they got the Cubs, Wrigley Field, oh boy, came back from 3-1, you know what I mean? But I asked about a lot of stuff. <coughs> in the game, we were talking about uh, – we, we had like a like a 10-minute conversation in the middle of the game at the end about River and just like like all the other slots that have played for him. And I was like – I was like trying to trying to bid for River being like – being like the best one. You know what I mean? It's hard to do that when you got Wes Walker and stuff like that. But he was talking about like just – just giving me all this stuff about Danny Amendola and Wes, Wes Welker and everything. And I was like, yeah. I was like River hasn't even, he hasn't even played in the league yet. You know what I mean? Let me get a shot. You know, it'll be fun. I mean, he's big. You know, he's bigger than the slots that he's had. You know, he's fast. Catches the ball well. He's a good blocker. I don't know. Yeah. He's like calling plays. And I'm just standing next to him. They're like calling plays. He's like, yeah, so anyways. And then Danny one time caught a, caught a drag route. And, you know, it's a bunch of weird stuff. Talk about the talk about elections and all types of stuff. He's a cool guy.
Anything else for Gabe? Is this, is this moment now when you're, you're in November and you're playing games for a Pac, you know, every game is sort of for a Pac-12 championship or it's on the line. How, how much of that feeling is, is what you came back for? Uh, well, yeah, this is, this is being able to, to, to talk about this right now is, uh, is definitely what I came back for. I knew this team had the ability to, to be at, to be at this point right now. And, uh, it's just really cool to be able to play up, play big games right now at the end of the year. Our, my coach, Coach Nickel, always, he always says that, you know what I mean? Like, it's fun to be practicing for meaningful games in November, you know what I mean? That's the good stuff. So, yeah, we're all in uncharted waters. So, you know, just trying to, you know, keep going forward. Kind of going off that, is it hard to not let your mind wander to uh, thoughts of a Rose Bowl and you're an LA kid when you came back? I mean, <clears throat> no. I mean, it's not the, it's not hard to let let our mind wander. So we got like we got like practice tomorrow, and stuff like that. So I don't even really think about the game really until like Friday after our walk after our run throughout there. Where I'm like sweating and like breathing heavily and like about to pass out. So there's a lot of work to be done even from here to the game. So it's hard to think about that far down the road. You know, I'm not even thinking about the game right now. I'm just thinking about if I'm going to drink enough water for practice tomorrow so I can have a good practice. Bobby, will take her. Yeah, Bobby's got water for days. This guy, this guy's getting on the elevator today. I saw him get on the elevator. He had like 10 bottled waters in his head. It's like, relax, Bobby. You're good. You and Coach, take care of your coach. How much water does he drink? A lot. Last chance for Gabe. Hey, Gabe. With this being you know, senior year and things like when you're in the last of something, things feel like they're going pretty quick. Is that what you're feeling now? Like noticing, wow, this season's almost wrapped up, or this, can, this is my last chance to do this, or this is my last time here, or anything like that? I haven't. I don't, I don't think about anything like that, actually. <clears throat> I don't think about anything like that. Like, it doesn't even, it hasn't even crossed my mind, like, oh, wow, this is like. The last time I get to play, I don't know. Before the last Tuesday. Yeah, it's just like, come on, man. I got practice tomorrow, you know. Like I said, I gotta be get ready for practice tomorrow, so I don't know. I just kind of take things as like a just another little stepping stone, you know. Just keep on moving, you know. You start if you start doing that stuff, then you you know. You start like worrying about it. oh wow this is the last thing. It's like. I'm 22, you know. I got to make sure I got got enough juice to get through the, the long haul, you know what I mean? I got a lot of life to live, so. I mean, maybe when I'm, like, dying, I'll be like, wow, that was that was a good last game at Oregon State. Something weird, I don't know. I don't really even remember stuff like that well, so.